Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, I'll show you how to add this design as your Blogger homepage. So let's get started. All right, this is my Blogger website where we're gonna add the design. And whenever someone visits this page right here, we're gonna redirect them to a different page as the homepage. And then we're gonna add this design to the homepage. So let's go back to the dashboard of our Blogger website. And let me show you the theme that I'm using. So if you go to theme, this is the theme that I'm using. So if you scroll down, the name of the theme is Emporio and it comes by default with Blogger. Previously in one of my videos, I showed you how to add a design to this Contempo theme over here. But in this video, we're gonna add the design to this Emporio theme. Now some of the CSS that I'm gonna write can be different for different themes. So you have to make changes depending on the theme that you're using. But I'll show you the process of customizing the homepage of this theme right here. And you can use the same knowledge to customize the home page of any theme you want. So first of all, let's create a page as the home page. So let's go to pages and let's click on new page. And here for the title, I'll just type home. And here I'll just create an H1 and I'll just type testing over here. And I'm in the HTML view. So if you go over here to this button, you can see that I'm in the HTML view. So if you're in the compose view, you can just go over here to the HTML view. This is where you can write the HTML. So let's go over here to publish and confirm all right our home page is created so let's click on view and this is how it looks right now and uh, this is our home page url now we're going to change this design and make it like this so whenever someone goes to this page they will see this design right here all right now the first thing we will do is uh, we will redirect the home page to this page right here so let's copy the url of this page from here and let's go back to the dashboard and let's go over here to settings and let's scroll down and uh, here we have this section called errors and redirects so let's click on custom redirects and let's click on add and here we'll just type forward slash and here we'll paste the URL and we don't need to have the complete URL we can just remove this from here and let's click on permanent and OK and let's save it let's go back to the custom redirects and we have two forward slashes over here. Let's remove one from each of these fields. And let's click on OK. And let's click on Save. Now if we go back to our website and if we remove this URL from here and if I press Enter, we can see that we are redirected to this page right here. So whenever someone goes to this page, they are taken to this page right here. So here we will add our design. All right, now let me show you how to customize this page. Now what you can do is right click on any of these elements and click on inspect and the inspector will be open for you. Now you can go ahead and experiment with the CSS over here and if it seems to be working you can go ahead and add it to your theme. So here we can see we have this header and let's go over here to element style and let's type display none and now we can see that the header is not being displayed over here. Now this is line of CSS that you can add to this page. So let's go back to our dashboard and let's go to theme and let's click on this arrow and click on edit html and let's scroll down and go to the css let's go to the end of the css now this is where the css ends so i'll just make some space over here and i'll just add a comment and i'll just type custom home page and here we'll just type header and uh, here i'll just type display of none and let me just save it and let's go back to our home page and let's see whether it works. So let's refresh this page. And now we can see that the header is not being displayed. So our CSS is working all right. Now I'm not going to save this template file every time we add a line of CSS because that will take a lot of time. So I'm just going to add all the CSS over here and we will save it all at once. So I'll just go over here and let's go back to our home page and let's see what else we can remove from here. So if we scroll down, we can see that we have this footer over here. So let's right click over here and click on inspect and uh, here we can see we have this footer so we can remove this footer from here as well so I'll just type display none and we can see that the footer is not being displayed. So let's go back to our template file and here I'll just type comma and here I'll just type footer. All right now let's go back to our home page and uh, now we can remove this sidebar so let's right click over here and click on inspect and uh, we have this aside over here and here on the right we can see that this is a selector item view sidebar container 
let's add a display of none over here and let's see whether it works and we can see that it is not being displayed over here so let's copy this selector from here and let's go back over here and paste it right here so just type comma and now this should hide our sidebar as well all right let's see what else we can do so let's right click over here and click on inspect and uh, i think we have comments over here so if you scroll up we can see that uh, we have this section with the class of comments and uh, here we can see the selector let's add display of none and it is hidden so let's copy this selector comments from here let's add it to our uh, template file all right let's go back and uh, let's remove this title so let's right click over here and inspect and uh, it is called post title container so let's copy this class from here and uh, here also we'll just type display of none and uh, let's go over here and uh, let's add the class and we also need to add a dot over here all right let's go back and uh, let's remove this share button from here so let's right click and inspect so here we have this division with the class of post share buttons and here we have this selector so let's copy this and let's also type display of none over here and uh, we'll just copy it and paste it over here now we can see that we have a maximum width over here for this uh, container so let's right click over here and inspect and somewhere we have a maximum width setup so let's start from here this is the header so let's start from here centered bottom and for this we have a maximum width of 1185 so we can just set it to 100 percent so let's copy this selector and paste it over here and uh, here we'll just type max width and 100 percent and we still have some maximum width set for some other element so let's go to this main container and if we scroll down we can see that even for the main container we have a maximum width so let's change it to 100 percent now we can see that we have maximum width of 100 percent for this element let's copy this selector from here and let's go back over here and uh, let's paste it right here we'll just add a comma and paste it right here right now let's save this before going ahead and uh, let's see whether everything is working all right so let's save it and let's go back to our home page and refresh this page and we can see that everything is working all right so let's continue with the customization so let's right click over here and inspect and now we have some padding and some margin for some of these elements and uh, let's remove all of them so let's start with this division right here post body and uh, let's see whether we have any padding so we can't find any padding over here so let's move on to the parent division so let's go over here to post and even for the post we don't find any padding so let's go up and uh, let's click on slide and even for the slide we don't have any padding and let's go to the post wrapper and for the post wrapper we have some padding so here we can see if we hover over this we have some padding over here so let's remove the padding so this is the selector of the post wrapper so let's copy this and here for the padding and just type zero so let's go back over here and uh, let's go to the CSS and uh, let's add the selector over here and here I'll just type padding zero all right let's continue with the customization we had looked at post wrapper so let's go up and uh, let's see post outer and here we can see for the post outer we have a padding of eight pixels so let's change it to zero and let's copy this selector from here and let's paste it over here All right now let's move up and uh, let's check post outer container and we don't seem to have any padding over here as well let's go up to blog posts and we don't have any padding let's go to the widget and we don't have any padding over here as well and let's go to the main section with id page body and we have some padding over here so let's check the selector so the selector is centered main so let's copy this and let's paste it over here right let's move up 
Let's move up to the center bottom and we don't have any padding. Let's move up to the header and we had already hidden the header. So let's move up to centered and we don't have any padding. All right now let's move to the page body and here also we have a padding. So let's check out the selector. So this is the selector item view page body. So let's copy this and here for the padding we'll just type zero and let's go over here and paste the selector right here. And the last thing we need to check is the page. So let's go over here. And even for page, we have some padding over here at the bottom. So let's set the padding back to zero. And let's copy this selector from here and paste it over here. Now we also have to unset some line height or font family that we have on any of the elements. So let's go back over here and let's inspect. Now here for the post body, we have this font and this line height. So we have to unset the font and also the line height. So let's copy this uh, selector from here, post body, and let's add it over here. And we'll set the font family to unset and line height to unset. Right now let's save it. Now let's go back to our home page and let's refresh this page. Now everything looks all right, but we may have some other elements that we need to customize. But first of all, let's add the code of this design, the HTML, the CSS and the JavaScript. And let's go back to our template page. And first of all, we will add the font. So if you go back to the source code and here in the HTML, we can see that these are the links for the font. So let me just copy this and I just paste it over here in the head section. So this is the head section. So here I just paste the link of the font. Now I will leave the link of the source code in the description of this video. Now here we need to make some changes for the cross origin. We have to type cross origin equals and we have to type true. And wherever we have this ampersand symbol, we have to type ampersand amp semicolon because it is an XML file and it will throw some error if we have the ampersand symbol. So just replace the ampersand symbol with ampersand amp semicolon and let's save it. Alright, let's go back and go to the page. So we'll go to pages and click on home. Right now here we will add the HTML. So let's go back to our source code and let's copy everything inside the body. So we'll start from here till here and uh, let's paste it over here. Right now let's copy the JavaScript. So here I'll just create a script tag. And let's go back to our source code and let's go to main.js file and let's copy all this JavaScript from here and let's paste it over here. Right now let's add the CSS. So I'll just create a style tag over here at the top. So here I'll just type style and close it over here. And let's copy the CSS and let's paste it over here. Now there's a problem with our design where we have given a class of container to one of our elements. And if you go to our theme and if you right click over here and go to inspect, we already have a division with the class of container. So if you go over here to this division, we can see that it also has a class of container. So this might cause some issue in our design. So let's go over here to our HTML and we'll just change container to my container. And let's copy this from here. And we'll also replace container with my container in the CSS. So let's check for container. So here we have container. Let's replace this with my container. And I'll just do this with all the other container instances. We also need to add a dot over here. Right, I have replaced all the containers with my container. Right now let's save this and see whether it is being displayed. So let's click on update. And let's go over here and refresh this page. So we can see that some of the elements are displayed over here. Now we also need to add the images. Now if you go over here to our post and if you go over here to insert image and click on upload from computer and choose files. And if I select an SVG image and click on open, we can see that the upload has failed because it is an SVG image. So we cannot upload SVG in our blogger website. So we have to convert all the SVG to PNG. So I converted all the images in our website to 
PNGs. So let's insert those images in our website because here we can see we have these links images slash bglef.svg but in a blogger website you don't have this folder called images so this won't work so we have to upload the images over here and get the link and paste it over here or else you can go ahead and upload your svg file to some other hosting server and get the link and paste it over here but i'm just going to upload all the pngs over here in my blogger post itself so i'll just click on insert image and upload from computer and choose files and i have all the pngs inside this folder right here images png so let's select all of these images these are all png images so let's go ahead and click on open now i have converted all these images from svg to png using a tool called figma you can just drag and drop all the svgs into the tool and uh, just go ahead and export it using png so i'll just click on select and let's click on original size and ok so here are all the images and here are the links of the images so this is the link of the first image bg left let me just arrange all of these images so we will have some space between these uh, images all right i have arranged all these divisions now let's copy the links and paste it in our img tags so let's copy the link of bg left from here and let's scroll down and uh, here we have the bg left image so i'll just cut this and paste the link over here and we'll just do the same with all the other images so let's select the second image which is close icon so let's copy this and let's scroll down and uh, here we have the close icon so let's delete this and paste it over here now i'll just do this with all the other images all right we have pasted the links of all the images all right now let's remove all these divisions from here so I'll just delete all of this. All right, now let's update it and see whether it works. Let's go back to our home page and let's refresh this page. And here we have a problem. We have this image right here. So let's right click and click on inspect. And uh, we have this BG photo container. So let's type display of none. So we have to remove the BG photo container. And now we can see that everything has moved up. So we have to see whether we have any margin applied to any of the elements so let's right click over here and click on inspect and let's see whether we have any margin so here for the post wrapper we have a margin top of negative 368 so we have to remove the margin so let's set it to zero and now we can see that everything looks all right so we have to set the margin of this element to zero and we also have to hide the bg photo container so first of all let's copy this and uh, let's go back to our uh, template code so here i'll just paste the selector and let's type margin zero and we also have to hide the bg photo container so it is this division right here so let's copy this uh, selector from here and uh, let's paste it over here and we also have some problems where the background image is not being displayed here we can see we have this background image and we also have these colors over here so let's right click and see what's the problem and here for bg right let's change the z index to zero and now we can see that the colors are being displayed and we also have to change the z index of the right and the left elements to one so here let's select this and let's set the z index to one and now we can see that it is above the colors and we also have to change the z index of this left element to one so let's select this and here we'll just type z index one and now let's select the bg left and let's change the z index to zero and we also have more than 100 viewport height for these elements so let's see what's the problem and let's fold all of these elements and here we can see we have a division with the class of vertical add container now we'll hide this element as well so let's type display of none now we can see that we have 100 viewport height so let's copy this selector and uh, let's paste it over here and uh, let's save it 
and we also need to change the Z index. So let's go back and let's go to the page. And here for BG left, we have to change the Z index to zero. And let's scroll down and let's find the left division. And even for BG right, let's set the Z index to zero. So let's add the selector over here. So I'll just type my container, hero container left and my container, hero container right. So these are the classes that we had given for these elements. So here we can see inside hero container we have division right and division left. So let's set the Z index to 1 and let's update it and let's refresh this page and now we can see that everything looks alright we don't have any problems and even the horror effects and everything are working alright. So that's how you customize the home page of your blogger website to any design you want. Now there's a problem with this design that when we go to any other page in our blogger website all the CSS that we had added to our theme will be added to those pages as well. So let's go to a different page. So let's open a post right here. And now we can see that this page doesn't look right because the CSS of this page has been added to this page as well. So we have to differentiate this CSS from all the other CSS. For that we are going to use body classes. So let's right click over here and inspect. And if you scroll up we can see that for the body we have these classes item view and the version number. Now for this particular page we are going to add a custom class to this body. For example custom home page or something. And that class will be added to the body only if we are on this page right here. So in this way we can differentiate between this page and the other pages. So let me show you how to add a body class. So let's go back and let's go to theme and let's click on this button and go to edit HTML and let's find the body tag. So I'll just press Ctrl F and I'll just type body and this is where the body starts and these are some examples of body classes. So here we are saying that if the condition is is preview then we're going to add this class called preview to the parent which is the body. And we have a lot of body classes over here. Here you can see for single item, we have a class called item view for this body. So let's add our own body class. So I'll just type less than B class and let's type C O N D. Now in the condition, we have to check whether the current page is this page right here. So let's copy this URL from here. And uh, here we will type data colon blog dot URL equals and we'll just add double quotes and I'll just paste the URL over here and after that we'll type name equals and we'll name our class custom home page and let's close this over here. Now whenever we are on this URL right here we will have this class called custom home page to the body. So let's save this and let's check it out. So let's refresh this page and let's right click and let's click on inspect. And here we can see for the body we have this class called custom home page. And if you go to any other page, for example, if you go to this page and if you refresh this page. And if you right click over here and click on inspect. We can see for the body we don't have the custom home page class. We have the custom home page class only for this page right here. So let's take advantage of this body class and we will add it to our CSS. So that our CSS will only be added to this page right here. So let's go back to our template code and uh, let's go to the CSS and here in front of each of these uh, selectors we will type dot custom home page. So the body has a class of custom home page and then we are selecting the header. We will do the same with all the other selectors. So I'll just type custom home page. Now we have to keep one thing in mind with this selector right here because uh, this item view class is also a body class. So if you go over here and if you right click and click on inspect. Here we can see for the body we have this class called item view. So in that case you have to just uh, copy this and uh, paste it over here and uh, make sure that you don't have any space between custom home page and item view because both these classes are for the body. So you have to keep that in mind for this item view class. So let's continue adding the custom home page and uh, paste it over here. 
and here we have item view so let's paste it and uh, we don't need to have any space and let's paste it over here and space and here we don't have any space let's do the same thing over here and here and we'll just paste it in all the selectors right now let's click on save and let's refresh this page and let's see whether we have any problems and we can see that everything looks all right let's go to this page and let's refresh this page and here we don't have any problems because uh, the css is not affecting this page and everything looks all right and if you go to the home page we have our custom design all right now the last thing i'm going to do is uh, i will add the link of the index page i'll just add it over here in the home icon just to show it to you so i'll just go back and let's go to pages and click on this page right here and let's scroll down and here for the home icon I'll just copy this and uh, paste it over here in the href and we'll just replace phome html with index.html and uh, let's save it and let's go back to our home page and now if we click on this home icon we are taken to the list of all the blog posts and we can go over here to any of these posts and if you go to the home page we have our custom design so that's basically how you add a custom design to your blogger home page now if you want to learn how to design this home page from scratch using html css and javascript you can go ahead and check out my videos on that i have a complete series on how to design this from scratch and i will also leave the link of the source code in the description of this video so that's it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.